Corinth is a name great in Greek history. 2,000 years ago, it was one of the biggest and richest cities of Greece. Today, the ancient city is no more than a few fallen fragments of stone. of the complex and cultivated society which once peopled it, there are only the farm families which live nearby and cultivate their vineyards. of Corinth's glory is long past. The Corinth Canal, begun more than 1,500 years ago by the Romans and completed 60 years ago by the Greeks, is a modern artery of trade. To the Greeks, a seagoing people from their earliest days, keeping the canal open and in operation is vital. For it saves days of traveling time to vessels plying between the Adriatic and Aegean by cutting straight through the four-mile isthmus which once joined northern Greece with the huge Peloponnesian Peninsula. In the village of Ismia at the Aegean end, the canal company has its offices. The manager is Dimitrios Tarousis. Because ships wanting passage have to make arrangements in advance to be sure the way is clear, the office phone is busy all day with calls from nearby Piraeus and its harbor master. the port of Athens and the biggest port in Greece, is busier than ever these days because it is the principal transshipment center for Marshall Plan goods consigned to Greece. At Piraeus, cargoes are transferred from the big ocean-going ships to smaller coastal craft for delivery to their final destination. This afternoon, the Kaik Afandula, Captain Nicola in command, is taking on a cargo of sugar and heading out for Corfu via the canal. As soon as the cargo is aboard, Captain Nicola sets out for the harbor master's office to get his clearance papers stamped. sailing these waters in all the seas of Greece since he was a boy. But this is the first time since the war that the Afandula has been down this way. Back in Piraeus, the port authorities have already called the canal to tell Mr. Tarousis to expect the Afandula.
Captain Nicola and Mr. Tarusis are old friends from the days before the war when the Afandula used to make the trip through the canal a dozen times a year. Of all that has happened to the canal since, there is twisted, rusting evidence in the remains of locomotives and railroad cars piled up at the entrance. In 1944, with the war already lost, the retreating Germans toppled them into the narrow waterway to block it to Allied shipping. On the 3rd of October, 1944, just before 2 o'clock, the people of nearby Ismia were herded back out of the way. and its destruction are far behind. Within the canal, marks of the war and the occupation are still plentiful. Great scars in the walls show where the wartime explosion blew mountains of earth into the canal, blocking it off completely. To clear the canal took 13 months of hard work by Greek and American engineers and workmen. It meant excavating some hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of dirt, stone and silt. Thousands of tons of wagons, locomotives, ships and other debris sunk deep in the mud. But by November of 1948, the job was done. The canal was open to full use again. Once more today, between the two seas of Greece, the way stands clear, and through it is moving again the seaborne commerce which is the lifeblood of the Greek nation. Fishermen can move at will from sea to sea in search of bigger catches and a better living. Peace has settled down over current. And as always in times of peace, the nights are silent now. <laughs> 